Hello, this is Alex Eames from raspi.tv. Let's have a little look at the code. So up the top we start with importing time and the various modules of time that we need in order to break down the hours, minutes and seconds. So that's STRF time and date time respectively. Then we import APA, which is or APA, which is the class that I've written for the Raspio inspiring drivers in Python. Then the next couple of lines we're defining how many LEDs we've got and the brightness. Brightness is a 32 bit, so you've got essentially uh, levels from 224 to 255. Then in line 9 we set up our LED strip. This initiates the LEDs. Then we write zeros to all of their values, just to make sure that everything's as it should be in the zero position to begin with. And then we send those values to the LEDs to make sure that they're all off. And it prints a message on the screen, control C to quit. And we've put the whole thing in a try finally block so that when the program bombs out for whatever reason, whether error or whether we hit control C or any other kind of exception, that when it goes out of the program, when the program terminates, it will tidy up after itself by setting all the values of the LEDs to zero and then sending those values, writing those values to the LEDs so all the LEDs will be off when the program exits for whatever reason. So then we've got our main loop here which basically pulls in the time from date time and STRF time which helps you to format it nicely as a string. Then you pull out of that data the value for hours, minutes and seconds and print those on the screen. Then we start to, to use process those numbers uh, to set the values of the LEDs. So for the red hours we have three LEDs and it sets them all to the value of 255 and whatever brightness setting that we had. So it will take the one which is for the hour and the one either side of it. So this is the one which is on the hour, this is the one which is one after it, and this is the one which is one before it. And there's a little bit of logic here for when we get to the top, we have to start again, and just to make sure that that works properly. So then when we come to the minutes, we have to do a little bit of trickery because we've got 24 LEDs and we need to be able to display exactly 1 24th of 60, which is 2.5. So we're up to, we're changing the LED every 2.5 minutes. So what this line here does is it adds the number of seconds over 60 to the number of minutes, which is always an integer and makes that a float value so that we can precisely determine the number of 2.5 minutes is we are into the current hour which we will then display as a green single LED. We're reading the seconds as a float value straight from STRF time so we don't have to pl play about so much with that but here we're turning that into an integer and then that gives us the correct LED for the seconds. This function here sends the values of in the Python list to the LEDs effectively all at once, but actually it's one after the other but faster than you could ever see. In the next block, we're writing zero value to each of the LEDs that we've just written to. The reason for doing this is that if in the next iteration of the loop the values change, uh, so for example if we were showing LED 1 for 2.5 seconds and then the next iteration we wanted to write something to LED 2, if we haven't blanked LED 1 first then LED 1 will stay lit. But we're not actually sending these values yet. These values won't actually be written to until the next iteration of that. And it's possible that they'll be changed again before then but if they're not they'll be written to as a zero. And that's how we make sure that we're cleaning up behind us. 
And then we've got a little time limiting uh, sleep in here, which basically limits the number of cycles to about 33 frames per second. To be honest, you don't really need to update the LEDs any faster than that. You're just wasting processor cycles and processor time in case you wanted to be able to do anything else. And these, these last three blocks, here we have the animations. This animation does the red hourly wipe. Basically, it just cycles through each LED with a short gap of 0.03 seconds in between. Then it waits a short time and zeroes them all before carrying on with the program. And here we have similar code, but for the half hourly wipe, which is green, and here we have similar code for the quarter hourly wipe, which is blue. And then as we've already seen, if we ever bomb out of the program, either deliberately or accidentally, it clears all the LEDs. And that's all there is to it, less than a hundred lines of code, and quite a bit of that is blanks and documentation. So it's really not difficult, and certainly something you could build on and make a really cool NTP clock of your own. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested, please come and have a look at the Kickstarter. And don't forget the NTP clock reward includes the new Pi Zero W. So come along and have a look. This was Alex Eames for Raspi.tv. Thank you for watching.